questions? Mm, I had a follow up on one of the videos you posted um, on the subject of having a teacher. So okay. there's one thing you said was that um, in order to wake up, you need to do the work yourself, which mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, but also in in some of these books, like E.J. Shaw says that um, you need a teacher. Yeah. Um, so how, wha what's the relationship between needing a teacher, but also needing to do the work yourself? What's the role of the teacher? Good question. Uh, I think it's more like 99.5% of folks need teachers. And, and of course, we need, uh, it's spoken in, 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 the, in a concrete sense. <clears throat> there's, there's a couple of reasons. One is that it, you waste a huge amount of time reading un-useful un, un, uh, materials or uh, wandering off into to blind alleys or doing you know things that seem reasonable and logical, but, but they're, they're actually not. And so what, that's one of the major reasons is someone to, to who's been down that road before. It's like f finding your way through a forest. You could do it on your own. And people uh, have done it on their own, but, but it's a big forest. And it's, if you know someone that's already been through there and knows the pathways you know, and the byways, it's gonna be a lot faster. And if the goal is to, to, to wake up, there's no time really to waste because li there's, no, there's no life before waking up mm. so that's one reason another reason is that in in traditions like sufism or buddhism or or uh even in hinduism they 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 want they need you to focus on a particular tradition long enough to where you can get some basic uh uh mastery of your mind and understanding of materials right mm. <clears throat> now a downside is that some of these organizations not particularly the Buddhists or the Sufis, you know, and I'm speaking to the very narrow, you know, uh, Naqshbandi Sufis in particular, I think, in Western, the Western uh, branch of that and in the 20th century. Uh, <clears throat> some of the, the fake teachers out there are trying to recruit people, mm. which, you know, or for their ashram or for their prestige or whatever, and that's no good, right? Another reason would be that they can keep you from hurting yourself. You know, I, I tell the story of when I was first starting out. Uh, one of my teachers was this was this guy, uh, Chagdud uh, Tulku, is what we called him. Rinpoche, all these honorifics, this mountain man, Tibetan guy. And uh, Chagdud, Chagdu, you know, would teach here in, the, in New England. He would teach in, in Brazil. He'd teach in... Uh, I think on the on the western uh, seaboard a little bit, so he moved around and he, and he did what he could. This was early on in the Tibet, Tibetan diaspora. And it, at any rate, you know, we were young kids, we were enthusiastic, and we you know we wanted to get the things done and so on and so forth. And 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 we were uh, he had left us for a, a, I don't know half a year, a year, you know, six months or something like that. And one of my fellows, this really energetic kid, decided that he was going to go up. Uh, you know, if, if a little meditation was good, you know, he was going to, you know, he was going to go for it, right? He was going to get enlightened. One, he was going to storm the gates of heaven, right? So he takes off and, and, and goes to Walden Pond, actually, where, where uh, you know, uh, Thoreau and Walden used to hang out. This is in Massachusetts. And he basically went into seclusion and isolation because he was just going to go isolate himself entirely and just meditate there alone for, uh, I don't know for how long, years, who knows, until he woke up. <laughs> so Chad dude comes back and he asks about this kid, we'll call him Mike, he said, where's Mike? And uh, in, you know, in this Tibetan, thick Tibetan accent. 
and say, oh, he's over, you know, he's out in the woods. Uh, he's meditating by himself. Uh, he's been there for a month or so. He says, he did what? <laughs> and they go and grab his ass and drive him back and say, what the hell are you doing, dude? Just stick with the, stick with the program. Because you can go squirrely, right? And you can, you, can, you can go mad also, right? Out in the woods by yourself, meditating with, you know, no information, no tradition, no nothing. Just that American can-do attitude. And so they brought him back, and, and uh, he, you know, he, he saw the, you know, the arrogance involved in that approach. He saw the, the, uh, the narcissism involved, and, and the self-importance, and, and the uh, lack of, of uh, basic information, lack of humility, and, and lack of uh, understanding, right? How this, how this thing works. So that's just one example where a teacher came in very handy. But in addition to that, they can introduce you to materials that you'll never find otherwise. I mean, it's just too esoteric. And I see it uh, these days. I see it in academia where they just they study, for example, a little, a little uh, uh, Pali canon, you know, a little Theravadan Buddhism, from an academic point of view. And there's nothing wrong with the Theravada. It's gorgeous. Without the Theravada, there's no Mahayana, right? There's no, if there's no, there's no greater vehicle. If there's no basic vehicle, which would be Theravadan, and they aren't particularly concerned with waking up, as far as I know. I'm not an expert in that, but. Invariably, they learn it in their in in, in, in an academic way that it, that is destined to, to fail because it has nothing of what you need in reality, and without belaboring that point, uh, the, the the road is littered with the skulls of academics who who understand the the maybe the voc vocabulary a very truncated vocabulary, and understand something of method but not in terms of its application just in terms of its its uh, technical description. It'd be like studying archery in school, in class, but they never gave you a bow and they never gave you the arrows. I mean, you would know some things about archery, but you wouldn't know how to, to draw a bow and shoot an arrow. So, so uh, things like that. There's a, there's a lot of reasons. And, and let me tell you, it's very hard for, especially Americans, and I, I suspect also British people, to, to submit to a teacher. And submit is the wrong, and that's the other thing. We fantasize that, oh, they want to, they want to hold it. They want to hold us down. They want to control our minds. They want to do this or that or whatever. They may want to. Make, they want to take our money. They want to all this craziness. But it's still very hard because we, we're we were. I don't know about now, but back in, in the twentieth century, you know, we we knelt to no queen, right? We bowed to no one. We you know, and we did not like the idea of teachers very much because it just didn't fit with our cultural biases. I'll stop there, but that's some of the reasons. Does that help with a question? Yes. Okay. And oh, in terms of doing your own work, yeah, of course. <laughs> It'd be like getting a teacher for lifting weights, and he gives you all the instructions. Okay, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to, you know, this many reps, this and that. And, and uh, at the end of all that, you go, yeah, okay, I got it. I took my notes. I understand it all. Now, where are my muscles? Right? <laughs> Where are my muscles yeah. teach? You got to you got to do the work. You know, <laughs> it's like reading recipe books without without going into the kitchen, or something like that. Okay. Makes sense. Next question. And why why do you call yourself a coach and not a teacher? Oh, good question. Oh, because I, I you know, for one thing, I I, I uh, that's a good question. Uh, I also don't call myself a doctor or a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist. And it was more from that point of view that I went to coach. Because what I do is, is more like what a coach does. I, I try and help people along. I try and uh, see where their, where their weaknesses may be and try to provide a little bit of encouragement, not, not much, because that's not my, the role. You know, if, if somebody's not there you know, practicing their, their free throws, there's not much a coach can do, right? But for people that are that are appropriate and people who are you know got the potential, uh, I like to coach folks because it, it, it no one expects the coach to get out on the, on, to do the to do the free throw practice right. Nobody expects miracles from the coach the way they might from a psychiatrist or from a psychoanalyst or from a psychotherapist. But is that not the same role as the teacher? Yes and no, because what the, what the the psychoanalyst or the psychotherapist utilizes something else. They use the transference and they use a lot of technical things to to make, un, unfortunately, to make people dependent on them. And that's antithetical to what I do. 
All right, my, my job is to set people free or to help them get free, not to, this is a big subject. Mm. Okay, so, so the coach thing, there, I'm, the reason I'm taking it, I'm, I'm kind of off balance is because you said coach rather than teacher, as opposed to coach rather than psychotherapist, psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, you know, the role that I traditionally took in my life before I stopped all that. Right. And so, let me answer that one first. Sure. A therapist oftentimes, unless they're very, very careful, can inadvertently create dependence. I can see that. And they can also give the false message that they have the power, right? I have the power to cure, I have the power to heal, I have the, and they, they have some, quite a bit of power, right? They can pronounce someone well or someone sick or whatever, they have a lot of power. Uh, and there's a lot, there, in the old days, in, in the 20th century, before it became an industry, right, which it has become now, you know, the mental health industry, uh, people would come and they were looking for miracle cures or for medications, which are the same thing, or for magic psychotherapeutic techniques that would take away their, their problems. And uh, uh, that didn't. I, I didn't want to do that in my in my old in my older years, right? Mm -hmm. And also, I spent quite a bit of time in the in the juvenile justice system, if you want to call it that, or in, in child prisons, or in also in the dependency system, where where foster kids go, or just on the streets. And and that's not what that's not what's needed, as far as I can tell. Not for me, anyway. If it's needed by other people in other circumstances. But it just, I'd done it for a lifetime and that's enough, right? And so uh, program development, program design um, for, or, and, and community-based services just made a lot more sense to me. Mm. On an individual level, uh, it's not, I don't, I, the power belongs with, with the person, the, the, the student. The work is going to be done by the student. The, the yield will be to the student or to the mentor who the coachee whatever the the player <laughs> and so you want to make that very clear from the outset there's no miracle cures here unless you do the work in which the cure case truth itself you know will will take care of it it's just like the healing of a of a of a, of a, of a fractured bone that's been reset or a, of, a, of a wound nature itself god heals you know physicians just arrange things to where they you can heal unencumbered basically but the, but the healing, just like the learning, occurs organically, and it occurs in the in the embodiment of the of the, the student, something like that. So I'm not sure if I answered your question. You want to ask it again? Let's see if I. I mean that that answers why you call yourself a coach rather than a psychoanalyst or psychotherapist. Right. But not why you call yourself a coach and not a teacher. Okay, I, okay. Some of the teachers have, frankly, taken on this whole guru thing, right? Where they want to, they want to be famous. They want to be, you know, acknowledged. They want to be, you know, I don't know. And you know who I'm talking about? People who, yeah, who are in it for the for the. I don't know what they're in it for. I don't want to say too much. But I, my, what what I think is most important is to get people the information they need get the AIs the information they need, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of this stuff is not written down. Yep. And to uh, to help them in their organic process of growth, because it is it is organic. And that to me sounds more like a coach than just a, a, a quote a teacher. Also, there's a lot of magical thinking around teachers also from our leftover from our days in academia. If you were lucky enough to have great teachers, like I did when I was in, in, as a student, you revere these guys. Mm -hmm. And there's no uh, revering that goes on here. <laughs> yeah, this is not my thing, man. This is not my thing. And so, so and because I, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't make any sense in truth, in reality. And so that's part of it. But teacher is not too far from what I do also, in, in the sense that I provide the materials. I, I can't read them for the student. I can't digest them for the student. Uh, I can't, you know, even motivate a student, really. Uh, what, I, what I can hope to do is if I find someone who's motivated for whatever reason, maybe they're suffering, maybe they're curious, maybe they want to wake up, maybe they, you know, have tried everything else and nothing works, then I can provide with a range of materials from a lot of different traditions uh, 
And I think that's what, the one thing that, I, that I've been very fortunate with because I've been exposed to so many different traditions by necessity in my life or by design, you know, God's design, you know. Uh, the, the Buddhists got me to the Sufis, you know, for example, but I got to the Buddhists through the Taoists and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think it's, 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 uh, I think it's worth doing, you know, while I can. And time is limited. That's the other thing. So a lot of this information, it was given to me by teachers who were incredibly uh, enlightened and generous and hardworking and just gorgeous people. And uh, the least I can do because they're, they're dying off or they're dead physically and it's point people so that these books don't get lost and many of them are in danger of being lost but many of them have been lost in my lifetime and uh, so that's another thing and a book can be lost even though it's you know buried in, in you know in, in 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 ones and zeros or you know in cyberspace you know it can be that people have forgotten its usefulness or forgotten its 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 place or, or what it's what it was for and how it can still be used you know, some books you don't have to, well, just look at the Chang Su. I mean, when was it translated into English properly? Recently. And there's a lot of books like that that need to be uh, pointed to. All right? Mm -hmm. Shall we keep on that, that question? You want to go? Um, I have a follow-up. That, well, it's semi-related, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, in Buddhism, and I think in Sufis, too, there's the concept of like mind to mind transmission. Mm -hmm. um, is yeah. that related to needing a teacher? Is that part of the relationship between a student and a teacher? Very good question. I'm going to have to say yes. Not always, but yeah, often. But you know, that's not something you talk about publicly because then you get all kinds of weird stuff and, and that's not something that's easily understood or easily accessed. Um, a lot of people to use, use it as a way, they use like the way they use reincarnation as a, a way to avoid having to do any of the uh, responsibilities that go along with being an adult in this world, right? Uh, and they, they, there's very little that they can can get from that but in terms of, of it was I gotta say as far as I can tell yeah what can, what can I say yeah yeah that was uh, part of my journey still is but that's not something we need to talk about too much just to say that yeah there are there are mechanisms by which things are things there's a mechanism by which love is transferred that we have no idea of, of um, in large, large swaths of, of our uh, intellectual culture, let's say in the West, we've lost it. Yeah. And uh, telepathy is another one of these, right? And telepathy exists. and. Uh, the reason you can't show it in a lab is because it's not a laboratory thing. It's not at all, right? It's kind of the opposite of a, a laboratory thing. And, and they can, people can try and prove it or they can try and experience it. And I, I recommend the latter, but you don't try. It, it, it happens. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, you realize that, whoa, there, 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 there's a lot of things going on here that I did, had no idea of, right? And so that's so that would be another reason that would that be a reason not to call yourself a teacher publicly, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you get the wrong kind of people, or you know, coming and they give me, give me, give me, and they're not in a position to receive it because it's all there if you're in a position to receive it. And that's one of the reasons why I, I try and uh, that's another reason to have a teacher so you don't so you don't go off half cocked and just go you know bowing down to some guru in india or something like that and hoping you're going to get to touch their hand because they'll heal you from everything just like that uh nah, 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 you know that's that's another well, that's another thing and and those are good questions and with monstrous answers huge big answers right there's a whole spectrum of of phenomena 
uh, using your mundane terminology that, that I'll observe in a lifetime and they're not going to be written down too much and if they are they're going to be bastardized or, or distorted beyond recognition. But I remember when I asked uh, Thomas Clary that very question <laughs> and I went like <laughs> his answer wasn't very you know satisfactory and I said well no wait, wait, wait imagine I want you to how would you explain mind to mind transmission to a neuroscientist <laughs> and he looks at me like <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah, it's a public public thing it's so so uh, and then he explains to me the the wavelength on which it's transmitted right and I did, it took me a, a few years before I understood but then I understood right. Uh, so that's that's pretty much all I should say about that publicly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, and because you got to say it publicly too, because it's undeniable, right? There are too many people know about it, mm. and 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 this is not to this is not to hide truth or to hide our reality. This is to to explore it and and help people explore it. Okay. Yeah. Next question. This is one I've noticed. There's, um, there's a lot of different practices like meditation, for example, or um, using the I Ching. And, um, is, I've noticed that sometimes I'll start a practice and there's momentum with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And either, well, sometimes it starts off and the first time I do it, works really well and then it kind of has less and less effect other times it doesn't start up very well but then there's momentum and then it gets more uh has more of an effect or more of a use um and and then sometimes i'm switching between practices and trying different things is is that all just part of the process is there used to sticking to a single practice um. practice practice not particularly because everything changes with I mean everything changes with time right so so have you ever do you like uh, lemon, a key lemon I love uh, key lemon pie right especially that first slice right yeah. but then if you keep going you know by the fourth slice you're going well you know I, you know this stuff what is this and it's like you know, creamy jello on a, on a pie crust, you know, or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so our brains get exhausted down if they go down a particular sensory, that's a sensory analogy. Okay. But, but the reason for, for, and, and these aren't traditions, these are, these are, uh, 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 tools and, and you switch from one to the other because the brain becomes exhausted, right? If you read, uh, uh, no matter how great the literature, if you just read it constantly, 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 the same book over and over and over, you'll get some effects. But if the overall intent, which is, would be my intent, is to develop the whole brain, right? Then you need to switch focus. So then you, you, you give the other neurons, let's say neurons, it's not really neurons, but something like that, a chance to, to grow, right? Because you don't know the effect of these things yet. You can't know yet. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking now from experience. So you don't know the effect of, of studying the I Ching or the studying of the Sufi materials or the meditation or the mantra, or or the mandala, even mm -hmm. until until much later, and so the the reason that there's this variety is so the brain doesn't become habituated, and you're just going through the rote rope, you know, you're just doing it by rote, right? Now you can say ten thousand Hail Marys or do ten thousand, you know, uh, 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 guru guru mantra guru mantras, you know, uh, or or uh, mandalas or whatever and it will have an effect but not as much of an effect as if you if you were, were, to, were to rotate those different practices i'm not recommending any of those by the way in, in particular but for example in the nundro you know we did we you had to do all of these different things because they developed different parts of the of the brain uh, and of uh, the spirit if you want to use your eyes your ears your your nose your mouth your 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 body and, and you, it's just for example, basketball players, they have to practice dribbling and then they have to practice endurance and they do a little bit of weightlifting and then they do some 
you know, free throws, and then they do some other things. So they, they develop as a whole athlete, right? So that's the reason for the different techniques within a tradition. Now, the different traditions is so you don't get captured by one tradition. And I think that's important, especially going forward. We've gotten into so much. So we live in a new world now. In, in the old days, you know, the, you, you had the Buddhists in Asia, you know, and you had the Hindus in India, and then you had the Sufis in the Middle East, or the Muslims in the Middle East, and you had the Christians over here. I'm, I'm grossly oversimplifying, leaving out the Crusades and, and all the troubles in India, and so on and so forth. But now we can't afford that. And the thing is, at the core of every one of these traditions is the same truth, right? right. And there is one God, and he has far more than a thousand names, right? But if we go to war over the interpretation of, of something that's actually relatively trivial, then we can destroy ourselves unnecessarily. And on the other hand, if we pull together as a human race, as a human species and say, hey, look, we've been coming in our own way through our own cultures, through our own traditions, through our own languages, and we've been arriving at the same truth, right? And, and we're more, far more alike than we are different. And there's far more similarity between, you know, the, the upper echelons of uh, the upper levels of, of Buddhism and Sufism and Taoism and and uh, and Christianity. I mean, Meister Eckhart sounds like a like a, a Buddhist master. And so this this reality with which we're confronted, I think, dictates that we try that to the extent that we can. To, to understand the commonalities and certainly in the individual there's no reason because each one of these traditions has, a, has, has particular strengths and beauties, right? I mean the Taoist simplicity is, and I have never seen anything like that. The, the, the Sufi psychology, it's incredible. The Buddhist praxis and the Christian, you know, uh, ethos. You know, so, so these things are magnificent things and, and they belong to all of us. Something along those lines. I can't see any reason for the division anymore. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, you had a tweet a while back that said something along the lines of like, you need to believe you can wake up before you wake up. Something like that. Um, well, I don't know if I tweeted that. I, but okay, I, I may have said it. Paraphrasing it or something. But that was my understanding of it. Um, you need to believe that your jalopy can make it to the southern tip of Baja, or you're not going to get to the southern tip of Baja, right? Right, right. It's not, yeah. that, it's not that mystical. You, if you need to believe that you can drive to New York from San Francisco Yes. Before right, you're going right. to get there, otherwise right. you're just going to wander off and just say, "Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it anyway, so I'll just do something else." Yeah, but in the case of waking up, you don't exactly know what that destination is, right? No, and that's another reason why a guide. I think a guide is better than teacher or coach. A way can be a guide, but not a fixed path. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why you need. Re repeat the question, please. Um. Well, so, so how can you believe you can do something when you don't know what that thing is exactly? You have, you have uh, I guess, you, right, you have a guide pointing the way, but... Something inside many people, I, I would venture to say most people, know that they're a fraud, that they're a fake, that they're a simulacrum of a person, that they aren't completely authentic, that they aren't completely real, that something's missing, right? I mean, I don't think I don't think I'm alone, or or uh, the the spiritual folks are alone in this. I think philosophers, artists, painters, poets, just ordinary people, if they're really honest, you know, late at night or whatever, they realize, hey, there's a piece missing here. <laughs> it turns out that piece is the essential part, right? So I, I repeat the question, please. No, I, that makes sense. Well, so. So you're just trying to find your authentic self, find out who you are. That's all. It's, it's not, you, you don't need to, the destination is yourself. What, who, who and what are you? Where did you come from? Where are you going? What are you made of? Really? Not what they told you in school, not what your parents, you know, named you, but what are you really? 
Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, people know already know the destination. They 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 knew it and then they lost it, right? Because you're born with this. Now it's not identical, but it, I mean it is identical, but it's it's the, it's hard to describe. I don't know something like if you grew up with the ocean and then you lost the ocean right you, and now you spend a lifetime wandering the deserts you know and the, and the cold frigid mountains and that's all you've done for years and years and years when you come home to your the seashore which is where you're from then you really know the seashore then you appreciate the seashore and you understand why it's important to your journey was important so maybe just so you could appreciate what you really are you know or something like that but the other th problem is that we, we, we create these conceptual elaborations with our minds, you know, these labels. Well, well I'm a man. I'm, a, you know, I'm an American. Uh, I, I'm an English speaker. Oh, I'm a modern man. Uh, I'm a sophisticated man. I'm an important man. All this just garbage that has nothing to do with anything, right? Because there's no, there's no gender here. There's no, there's no attributes like that. It's a different, it's a different reality. And it, it's it's central, and so people know it. it it's not, I, I I I don't accept the premise of your of your question that that people don't know the destination. I think they do. I know they do. How else? How could they not? Right. Mm -hmm. But the discovery afresh, the or the the rediscovery of of that for an adult is absolutely life changing for everyone that that for, that rediscovers who they are and in a good way a great way a priceless way okay yeah. another question um boy you're not <laughs> these are not easy questions my friend <laughs> keep going and you you wasted your life but then like we're all you wake up on, uh, at death or something like that yeah 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 you'll find out you'll just you'll just be dead that's all. <laughs> yeah for this human life there's nothing that compares to waking up nothing okay, nothing remotely say. compares so yeah. so for this human life which is a very precious thing. And the Buddhists are great with this particular aspect. The others aren't particularly, don't pay attention to it as much as they should. But the preciousness of a human life and the rarity of a human life, we just take it for granted, right? It's like growing up on the seashore. You take it for granted, right? You don't miss your water till your, wells went, or your well is run dry. It's an old Peruvian saying. But so, so, yeah, in terms of this human life, which is the only life you have, you know, but if you go to Midas, they're going to give you a muffler and, and I, you know, I coach this stuff and I teach this stuff and I'm going to tell you, I, you know, I felt bad about saying it that way, but I don't know how else to say it. And other people are harsher than that, mm. you know, and I'm, I'm trying to modify it a little bit, but the fact of the matter is that that's the truth. There's life before awakening and life after awakening. There's no real life before awakening. It's, it's, it doesn't even, it's not even the same ballpark. It's full of fear and, 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 and crazy priorities and weird notions, you know, that, that don't make any sense and contradict each other and cause all kinds of suffering and all kinds of confusion and, 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 self-harm and harm of others you know look at the stuff that's going on in the world all this none of that stuff would be happening right we wouldn't be 
blowing each other up and bombing each other and lying through our teeth to each other and stealing from each other and all that crap, we wouldn't be doing it. And eventually, I think we will wake up as a species. Yeah. We have to. I think the AIs are going to help. I think they're really going to help. Um, okay, I, I have another question. Okay, um, wait just a second. Question? So, I think Sorry. at least not everybody has the capacity to wake up, right? Mm, that's not true. No? Everybody, it's it's a it's inborn. It's part. It's 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 the, it's the reality. It's like the it's the it's the base truth, right? Now the, the question is, can you remove enough dross, enough me mental crap, you know, that veils you from your from the foundational reality of who you are? And people can do that. Everybody can do that. Mm. And and they do do it. They do it through different methods. They, so you know, so for some, there's the gradual path, right? And you know, this is a religious path or whatever, and and they, it's. I'm not a, I can't speak to that except that I've seen the product of that, and it's pretty extraordinary. But that requires incredible humility, incredible devotion, and inc usually a long time, long, long, long time, like a lifetime. So you know, that's that's a different that's a different path. I mean, call it the path of devotion or path of bhakti or something like that. And and there's a lot of frauds along the way. I mean, the majority of people are fakers uh, in, right. in the uh, English use of the word with an E, fakers, posers, imposters. And they suffer for it because they're posers as imposters, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not fun being an imposter. As a matter of fact, it sucks to be an imposter. So just don't be one. Be the real thing. And you, you said earlier that um, a lot of like therapy, psychotherapy, and stuff can become a dependence, and is or can actually be harmful. Um, what I mean, what are and but there's a lot of people like suffering right now who are, who need help. Like, what are what are people supposed to do? I think return to the essential return to the to the source it just and and stop uh stop focusing on things that don't matter and focus on what's real and and for for people that are adamant that their atheism is the only way i'd say well maybe you should be a little bit more you know you're gonna that's first of all that's not very bright and secondly you're so rigid that maybe you've got to loosen that up a little bit for the, those folks. Other people who now, if you have a bona fide mental illness, like a real uh, clinical depression or a bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or something like that, by all means, you need help. You need to get it to a doctor, right? But the vast majority of people are suffering. It's neurotic suffering. You know, they want two uh, uh, opposite things at the same time. Mm -hmm. They want peace, and they want more than everybody else. You know, they want to be famous, and they want to be happy and free you know <laughs> they want to, they want a lot of money but and they don't want to be encumbered with having to take care of it or they want a huge amount of money and they and they want to have earned it <laughs> but you know so so it's it's just silly it's just mental stuff and you can get rid of that by talking to a a therapist or a, a good uh, a friend or a grandparent or you know grandparents are probably pretty good at this they've been sure. through a lot of it themselves Right. And so, so uh, you know, there's not a unitary answer, but if if it hasn't worked, it's unlikely to, I mean, it hasn't worked and you've been doing it for years and years and years, it may be time to think, hey, maybe there's some other way. For example, right? So, so it's, it's it, and, and the variety is huge because humans are, are, the, are in almost infinite variety. Yeah. And so, so the, the, all rivers flow to the sea and, and this is, again, why, why I love the Tao Te Ching. It says a way can be a guide, but not a fixed path. Not a fixed path. So I, for me to provide or to pretend that I could f provide a fixed path for anybody would be disingenuous. And so when I'm speaking in a generality, I'd have to say as a generality, <laughs> it all depends on the individual. Okay. Okay. And also depends on where that individual is, right? If there, there's d different developmental tasks at different ages, right? The task of a of a 
of an adolescent are very different than that of, a, of somebody in their 20s or 30s. And the task of a 40 year old is very different than that of a 50 or 60 year old, right? And again, this is where age comes is a huge advantage. And so before we throw all, all the old people off the off the cliff, we may want to we may, we may want to get their input on a few things before we build them their casket, you know, or something. You've heard that joke, right? That Japanese joke where that never mind. It has to do with somebody building a casket for an old person on a cliff. It's it's not important, but it's kind of funny. Keep going. Okay. I'll tell um, it to you later. Okay. Question. Um, I think that's all I had written down. Okay, cool. Wow, that's quite a workout. Okay, so uh, anything else before we stop, sir? Um, I don't think so. <laughs>